Hello and welcome to Weekend Handyman. This is Josh here, working on the white jeep. And here we go with uh, an unboxing of all of the panels that I had at the start anyways. A um, little bit of a spoiler alert, I do end up getting the uh, rear floor pan in addition to the front floor pan that I had. As it turns out, the rear floor pan was pretty bad, uh, if not just as bad as the front one. But this is what my unboxing looked like. I'm sure you've done it yourself a thousand times and you've seen me do, seen me do it a thousand times as well. Yeah, if you guessed it, you got a floor van, two rocker panels, and two inner rocker panels. On a, on a Cherokee, these are the parts you can see, and those are the parts that they attach to internally, and then the other side attaches to the floor. I only have one floor fan because it's the driver's side front, that's the worst. Um, all the other floors are in decent shape, but still have some rot, whole rot holes on them, but I have some big pieces of 16th inch metal that I use to fill those holes in. All these panels are from key parts and they are actually 16th inch thick if you're wondering, but I gotta take this thing apart. So what we're looking at here is the start of ripping the interior out of the Jeep. Now, I've done this before on my red one, so there's nothing new for me, except for the fact that I had to work around the fact that it was a two-door, not a four-door like the red one. But it turned out to not be a big deal. Um, at initially, nothing else seemed to be going wrong. Everything was coming apart like it was supposed to. No harm, no foul here. Nice shot of my head there. I was initially just removing the front seats at this point. Uh, the front bolts, I believe, are a half inch, and the there's a big bolt in the back that I think is 11 sixteenths potentially, and then there is another small one that I think is a 15. And yes, there are three different sizes. Welcome to Chrysler World. Problem number one, that seat came out fine, um, the only thing I snapped was that bolt back there. Um, I ended up doing the same thing on the red jeep when I was taking that interior apart once or twice. Um, so I'll have to replace that, drill it out, and replace it with a normal bolt I suppose. This side however, this is the side that has the huge hole under the floor here, and uh, these front bolts for the seat are completely rotted. Um, I'm going to attempt to hit them with PV Blaster and maybe I can get a socket on the head otherwise I'll have to come in with the air hammer or air chisel and uh, just fucking blast the heads off um, and then figure something out later. Let's continue. PV Blaster didn't end up doing anything for me. The bolts just kind of rounded off so it's time for this. I think the bracket's routed. That's gonna be fun. So 
So the bracket that holds the front of the seat down, or in rather, was in fact rotted completely out. Um, you'll see here in a minute that I'll just pick the front seat out without removing those bolts at all. And there's whatever is left of the bracket rips out with it, sort of. And um, I suppose I should have took that as a little bit of foreshadowing as to what I was going to find under the seat and under the carpet. But I continued. I mean, at this point, I had to. It was either that or I'll lose the Jeep. Um, probably within another... Well, maybe not within a year, but it would probably wouldn't last much longer. But, I continued. And continued. Make sure you don't forget that connector. My red Jeep has them like that as well. Um, I remember one time there's a ground on the passenger seat actually as well and along with that connector that I just took apart. And on the red Jeep I had taken the interior part once to do Herculiner on the front of the floor. I had already done the back at the time but I needed to do the front. And I never reconnected the ground that goes under the seat. And for whatever reason, that ground was apparently part of the circuit for the blinkers and the interior lights. So the blinkers either wouldn't work or they would just work um, intermittently as they choose. So like if I put the left blinker on, all of a sudden the right one would go, then the left one, then the right one, then the left one. And then if I was, say sitting idle and I did the flashers or the hazard lights rather and then one of the blinkers the interior lights would blink with the blinkers and for the longest time or well it wasn't for the longest time it was only a, over the course of a couple days but it took me a while to figure out what the hell was going on and at one time it just dawned or one you know like the second day that it was happening it dawned on me that I should check that ground because I then remembered oh crap there was a ground of some sort under that seat. Let me put the, hook that back up and see what, what the deal is. As it turns out, that fixed everything. Again, welcome to Chrysler World. But the interior is coming apart nicely. Um, you're watching me right now remove the seat belt brackets along with the, what would be the B, cover, uh, B pillar, um, plastic covers, I guess. I just removed the center console which is, what is it, like four screws? No, six screws, I think. And then I just have to remove my Hearst T-shifter. Then I always put screws that I take out back in where they can go if I can. Or, or at the very least, keep them all with whatever part they came off with. I have lost screws, mixed them up far too many times to not do that. And, I can't stress that enough is to keep your screws with the parts. Either screw them back in where they came from or somehow keep them with the part because you'll more than likely lose them or mix them up. I have plenty of times. So the, with the carpet out we get a really good view of the destruction here. Um, there's really not much here from about over here to back here somewhere. Um, and here's that foil tape that I did the end of last year. This was my temporary floor pan. Um, so as you can see, there was never much here. And then over on that side is just rot. This part right here is actually the unibody framer, which runs all the way along this way. So that's good. Um, this is the seat bracket that the driver's seat attaches to, which is <coughs> completely destroyed. <laughs> um, so yeah. I think what I'm going to do now is get the shop back out here and vacuum all this shit up. 
to try and make sure it doesn't get on the ground too much. Now, you know, not that I'm not going to sweep the ground, but maybe keep it a little bit cleaner. And then uh, take apart the out, outer panels here, the rocker panels. Um, that's going to be pretty interesting too. So yeah, let's get that done. <clears throat> so there you have it. I just vacuumed the driver's side floor out of the Jeep. Uh, I mean, legitimately. Both sides um, of the unibody frame rail were pretty routed, including the back. The other side, however, is in pretty great shape. There's a couple uh, holes right there, but um, those are actually in better condition, or those spots are in better condition than they were on my red Jeep. So the passenger's floor is actually in great shape. Driver's floor, of course, is not. So, next thing on the list is remove the temporary um, diamond plate rocker panels that one of the previous owners decided to do to fix the rot. And, uh, yeah. So I just pulled this out of my uh, driver's side rock panel, and uh, as was the other side, it was completely full, full of spray foam. And uh, I'm guessing somebody ran, or whoever did this ran out of spray foam or something, but this is a roll of paper towels, just kind of stuffed in there for good measure. Um, yeah, and this one is a little bit interesting because somebody stuffed a carriage bolt through there too which was actually bolted, uh, bolted to the spray foam. So, uh, so yeah. Got my work cut out for me, but I've been looking forward to this for a while. It's a good Jeep, so I was gonna fix it right. So, time to stop thinking and start doing. So I've come up with a plan, it's time to execute. First thing that needs to get done are the floors. And then the rocker panels after that because the inner rocker panel welds to the floor. So the floor is gonna be fixed before the rocker panel and then I could do the outer rocker panel and a little bit of the dog leg that has a full, uh, hole in it. So in order to figure out what I need to do with the floor, I gotta remove this um, because I need to rebuild that anyways. So it's held in with spot welds over here on both sides. Um, I gotta make sure I remove the wire out of the way so I don't destroy it. Um, the wire, that is. And pull that all the way out. And I'm uh, just gonna take my air chisel and just chisel the spot welds up, bus spot welds out. And then I can mark and cut out the floor pieces that I wanna make, or well, completely cut this out, and then figure out how much I wanna cut in the back and then get to doing some quote unquote body work. So, safety glasses, ear muffs, air, it's time.
there ended up not being much uh, front floor with uh, front floor left. Um, you know, that's all airspace here, big airspace up there, and then a lot of the firewall got cut out under where your feet go. So, at this point, what I have to do is vacuum out this. I've already ground it down, I've already ground these top rails down and cleaned up the inside best I could. But uh, I'm going to clean them up, wipe it down with some mineral spirits, and then throw some primer and then truck bed liner on the inside of there so to sort of hold back the rot sort of as long as I can. And then, <clears throat> and then I have to put the floor in place and make pieces to fill this gap here and fill the fill the hole that I cut out in the firewall and then I can move on to the rear floor and that'll bring day one to a close be sure to check us out on Facebook give us a like subscribe come back for more leave a comment do whatever you please but Get out there, do something.